Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we are going to step into Age 1 and Uncave Man herself. So, I hope you guys are ready. Hey guys, Future Chosen here. Just wanted to say thank you guys for watching, and if you haven't subscribed already, why not do so? It's absolutely free, and over 40% of you guys who are watching this have yet to subscribe. Those are real numbers. Guys, I wish you the best, and I hope you enjoy today's video. So, starting off today, I have been grinding up some more bone mill uh, to get us some white dye powder. We're going to need to combine this with a little bit of flint and we're also gonna need to combine it with a little bit of clay so let's grab all of these fantastic items we're gonna put this together to get us some porcelain because we're moving on we're about to become more than just a caveman yeah by the way if you want to sort of just stand here what you can do is you can hold your food and just hold down the right click button and you will automatically eat when you get hungry because you will definitely get hungry um, and you can still stay here right clicking this um, and just hold it just like this look at that and you don't have to worry about accidentally dying which is very possible with this machine believe me i've done it before so with all of that porcelain we're about to move into a new age well as soon as we make this next bit we're ready to go so i'm pretty sure it is just like this and apply some porcelain and a little bit of lag. Welcome to age one. Yes, right there. That is where it's at. We are now in a new age and uh, I wouldn't consider myself a caveman anymore. We're more like a pre, uh, we're more like a baby. <laughs> but uh, no, seriously, we now have a lot of new things unlocked. As you can see, we're about to move into what I would call like more of a revolutionary or industrial age where we unlock a little bit more things. As you can see, we uh, get further into better with mods. We get into a little bit of immersive engineering and uh, we start smelting things and also prospecting and we start mining. Yeah, things are about to get a bit more interesting. So let's go ahead and get our porcelain smelter set up. Oh yeah, that's right. This, uh, this works a little bit differently. So we have this, I want to make a unfired faucet. Yes, it requires unfired porcelain, which should craft like that in the workshop. But I think at this point, don't we have a crafting table just like that? <laughs> So now we can bypass all of this oh, and get a crafting table. Goodbye, work stump. Welcome crafting table. Oh, this is so much better. Look at that. And there's our unfired faucet. All we gotta do is throw that in there, get that cooked up. Let's go ahead and get this set up. So we're gonna place the porcelain heater on the bottom and then the porcelain melter on the top. And this is going to receive the charcoal. Um, and since we can make charcoal really, really quick, charcoal, like, fuel sources is not even a problem. Like, it takes just a tad bit of time, but we're going to have tons of stripped logs, so making it is very, very simple. Oh, I need to place that back down. That's weird. All right, there we go. All right, so an unfired faucet. All we got to do is throw that on here. Um, oh, wait, it's on fire. I thought it, I thought it cooked. Oh, wait, does it not cook in here? That's right, it might cook on a grill. Yes, so yeah, we need to throw this on the grill apparently because it doesn't cook in the kiln, right? And then we're also gonna need another thing. We're gonna need a porcelain casting table and we're also gonna need a porcelain basin. Uh, and both of them are really gonna be used. So you do need to make them. The basin is probably gonna be the most used as of right now because we can't really cast much, not too much. Eventually we will, but not at the moment. Um, so we can place the faucet on here and we can throw this down here. And whenever we put something in this melter, which we only have three slots, we can then cast it out once it's melted. Oh, also, you see, we can now see what we're looking at. How nice is that? Um, and that is the Walla, by the way, uh, the what am I looking at mod. And it kind of tells you what you're looking at, which is very important, I think, in modded Minecraft. So with us entering into age one, we now have a bit more unlocked, including regular chests. How nice is it to have regular chests and have a regular crafting table at this point? Oh, it is, it is beyond nice. And uh, of course, just to expand our storage a little bit more, there we go. We can also now make leather three times faster uh, with a, a little bit of a wooden basin here. So this wooden basin 
can take any item that required water to be crafted in your inventory. It can now be filled with water instead and craft three items at a time in that same method. And uh, yeah, as you can see right here, you, you place three in at once and for one bucket of water, you're basically getting out three. So since water is kind of finite for us, you know, it's a better way to preserve water. We can also make a stone hoe. Oh, this is so nice because now we can get some uh, some actual produce made. Right. Bunches and bunches of produce. That's that's exactly what everyone wanted, right? Where in the world did my sticks go? I I I promise I I'm pretty sure I had sticks. So of course, bam, now we can craft just like this. I'm also gonna go ahead and make a dowsing rod, which is gonna get us into prospecting. Ah, and we now have a field manual, which is going to tell us a little bit about how the um, geologist mod works, which uh, if you've never experienced this mod, basically instead of having ores that are underground here, which we might actually have some uh, just down in our mine, we might see some, I don't know. Uh, that's our low grade charcoal. Um, but down a little bit further, oh, there's a creeper down here. <laughs> Let's avoid that for just a moment. I. It's not a normal creeper. Um, I wonder if the uh, creeper thing prevents these guys from exploding. All right. Ooh, we got four gunpowder out of that out of that uh, little guy. Um, so yeah, I was wondering. Oh yeah, right here. So instead of ore, just piling up in large quantities like you would normally see, or, or piling up in uh, little like ore chunks. Instead, what you get is these massive ore veins. And like this particular one is malachite. And uh, what malachite is, is actually copper. So there's gonna be different names for different things, uh, more realistic names for different materials or, or for their ore uh, type. And uh, yeah, we're gonna need to take some of this. I'm glad we just got some, like that was, uh, that was pretty easy. But yeah, when you do find them, they are going to be in large veins, which is really nice. I actually, I prefer that over mining over and over and over again. You just mine so much cobblestone just over and over just to find four pieces of iron. With this, you do a little bit of searching and you can find entire veins. Like that was a vein so far, 15 plus we had already mined through it because areas that we had mined prior to this, um, those ores were hidden because we, we were just too to cavemen to know what they were and we couldn't even see them. That's how cavemen <laughs> we were. Uh, but now we can see them and thus we can mine them up and exploit the resources, which we're gonna do here in a minute. So setting up simple automation for this is not very difficult. However, we do need to have access down here to our little smeltery. And uh, to do that, I'm just gonna carve out a little bit of an area. Of course, if my pick wasn't broken, that'd be great. Uh, but I'm going to carve out a little bit of an area to give us access to the bottom half here. And I can add a stair. Now that we can craft things a bit easier, I can now just craft cobblestone stairs just like that. And slap some cobblestone stairs right there. And then that gives me access in this little corner. Even though I do have access right here as well. Um, so I do like the, uh, the kind of aesthetic of having this open. Let me go ahead and slap some cobblestone down here. And bam! We have this nice little area. I do want to place something right here. Let's see. Adding, just to add a little bit of flair, a little bit of decoration. I don't know, can we make walls and fences yet? Yes, we can. So, fences are now available to us as well. Uh, we have access to just a few more things. Like, and this right here, that's, uh, that's what it's all about, right? Let's go ahead and open this up. So, a fence, this will be a gate. Right? A regular gate. Would a gate look good here? Opened up like that? Clo even closed. It looks pretty good. I like it better open though. Um, so, there's a gate. Alright, so, <laughs> um, with a little bit of decoration. Anyways, I wanted to talk about this though. We just got this uh, copper cluster. Now, if we put nine in here, that is going to guarantee us enough to be able to pour into a casting basin. Uh, because we don't have a cast yet, we can't make casts, we can't do individual ingots. We have to set it up this way. And the best way to do that is to make sure you have enough to put out an entire block of the material. 
that's where we're going right now. That's what we're going to have to do. So in order to get the copper out and actually use this material, we have to go about doing it this way. Now, there's a couple of other ore that I need to get. We need to get tin and we need to get coal. Right here is how I am doing this. To make this a little easier on you, I recommend doing it this way as well. Uh, to find coal, you see I have coal and I have the, what the ore looks like, I have what the sample looks like, and I have the biome that is recommended that you can find it in, which is the Darklands. Um, and there's uh, the forest biome as well. I think you can find it. Then tin, of course, can be found in a birch um, biome, which is, I believe, part of our island here is a birch island. Um, that's how we ended up finding that. And then we also have um, some other areas you can find uh, copper, and that is going to be in a dark lands or a foresty area, uh, foresty biome. Sorry, we're not in a, a, a birch biome. We do not find tin here. We found copper, which is in a forest and or dark lands. Those are the two places. And it does tell you in here where you can uh, find those ores. And as we move along, um, it's going to, I'm sure, tell you uh, where those particular things might be found and might not. I don't know. That might be something that you just need to discover yourself by walking around and discovering these new little blips. Remember how I said, don't break the ones that sound like gravel <laughs> when we first started. That's because technically they are samples. Yes. And if you would have broke them, you would not be able to find those samples that you broke early on. So knowing that this sample's here, using this dousing rod, we can look down and see if there's any ore that is down here. Of course, we just mined it up. But usually within a chunk of this area being here, and uh, to access that, you can hit F3 and G to pull up a chunk boundary. Um, it doesn't look so well with shaders, but yeah, F3 and G will show chunk borders. Um, and I think you can also do it with F9. That mod is in here as well. Uh, but either way, look within that chunk. You might find it usually within that chunk area. As you can see, we have another area over here that we haven't even mined that potentially has some as well. And we might be able to just douse a little bit until we find it like it being um this is up to 48 so up to 48 blocks it should easily be able to to find at least a portion of it and then once you do you can mine down that is one of the reasons why you're able to create stairs but we also have the ability once we mine down to just climb back up by hand which is very very handy i almost forgot to mention but you can also break this and that will uh, net you a single piece of the uh, material as well. Oh, and right there, we ended up finding where the ore is located. So all you gotta do is you would just mine down and there you go, you found a bunch more of the uh, the copper. So our block is ready to pour there. Look at that, that's gonna get us a whole block of copper. Now I wanna start working on a, a few more crops. I went ahead and made just a little bit of an area and I wanna talk about some of the other crops that we could be getting up and running. Uh, let me grab some string because we're gonna need this and I wanna make some of the, uh, the more interesting farms that you can have in here because Rustic is in here. It's a fantastic mod. If you don't, if you don't know what Rustic is, I recommend checking it out because there's a lot of cool things you can do with Rustic. And one of them is the really amazing farms that it has. So we can plant tomatoes. We can plant a few other things. We can plant grapes. I mean, honestly, grapes are really cool. Like it's one of the cooler things that you can do. Um, but it's also might be kind of confusing for people. So I do want to show how we can make a small grape vineyard style thing. Um, to do that, I guess this would be a really good place right here. We can go ahead and use this crop. We're gonna go ahead and place down a stake. Actually, we can probably do it right here. Let's place a stake here and one here, make it too tall. And then we're gonna take the rope and we're gonna connect this rope all the way over to this side. And then what we need to do is plant our grape seeds down here. And this is going to create a grape vine. Yes, when this grows, we're gonna be able to harvest grapes from here. Now, another thing you can do is use these stakes to plant things like peppers, which are really nice, and to plant tomatoes. So we can take these and plant chili seeds. Um, let me actually break this. I don't remember if the chili seed, I think I'm pretty sure the chili seeds require these stakes. Let's place that. No, it does. It requires it to be placed on something. I thought it was a stake though. Yeah, I was right. My goofy self just didn't place two stakes. Ah, anyways. So right here is a chili pepper seed. And uh, at the moment I don't have enough steaks, but uh, we'll make some here in a little bit. But I can also place the tomato because it works very similar to this. Um, and we just click on the actual post itself. Yeah, I don't think it'll grow 
like this, we can place it, but it's not going to grow to its potential. You definitely want it to be a little taller than that. Same as this. Look at it. It's already growing. There's the grape seed. Hemp seeds are, of course, going to be another major benefit, and we definitely need it planted. I'm also going to plant some pumpkin seeds as there's a lot of practical uses for pumpkins. So we're going to get those planted. Also plant a couple of melon seeds. Why not? And I think that's the majority of the major seeds that we're going to need planted. Uh, the rest, I'm going to kind of fill in with some wheat and some other crops that we have. Like, I don't know. We have like rice seeds. Those are going to be important. That can make uh, pretty much like a slime variant. Another useful item is going to be a stone anvil. And as you can see, when we made that, we also got a stone mallet. This is, yeah, going to be a new thing that we need to get into because I just pulled out my block of copper. To place this here, we need, of course, left click, not right click like you do on this. Left click. And then that will bust open and turn into, as you can see, regular copper ingots. And that's exactly what we need to do. So. Let's do some prospecting. So as I was out looking for some things, look who I found. Yeah, that's the librarian. He offers the Antique Atlas, which would be our first book. This is gonna be our first like map, like mapping style ordeal. Did he, what just casted me up in the air like that? That was weird. I just got like randomly thrown up in the air as if I was using my kite. Okay, anyways, this, this guy right here. Ah, he's gonna be, he's gonna be good. I need to remember kind of the general direction where this guy's at. I mean, it's kind of hard to miss because he's sort of sticking off the edge of this island, but still, that guy is offering the map that we really need. So I'm heading towards the dark forest right here, and hopefully I can land comfortably here without uh, much. Okay, there we are. So we're here. Um, now, this place should have the stuff we're looking for. What is this? Oh, that's a leftover wood from last time I was here. Um, so we're looking for coal because there's supposed to be coal deposits here. And hopefully we can find some. Um, by the way, you might also still at this point find rocks that are gravel like that. And those are going to be uh, still something that is left undiscovered. You just haven't found it yet. So yeah, I'm not finding any in this particular forest. So we might have to travel a bit further to see if we can't find another forest that might have the uh, the coal ore deposits on it because, well, really that's, that's what we need to find. So because I didn't find the coal in that particular biome, maybe I'll find it in this one. This is a roof forest and we should hopefully find some over here as well. Ah, so this is tin and this is another material that we need to find. Uh, I'm gonna guess, oh, yep, and right about here is where it's located. Um, so yeah, I should be able to mine down there and hopefully find exactly what I'm looking for. As you can see, I am for some reason missing my pick. So finding the, the rustic beehive, oh, that is so nice. What is it, error 404, heart not found. Ooh, the Tin Man, what a reference. Anyways, um, so it does look like the, uh, the ore deposits are you know, not as large as I remember them, but of course that makes total sense. We are on an island, so they can't be as large. Uh, but you know, they're they're a pretty decent size, as you can see. Now, us getting the the bee back to the, what the bee can offer. It can actually speed up our crop growth. It is a fantastic tool for speeding up crop growth, and uh, can also be used later on for some other recipes as well. So getting that bee was actually really nice. And uh, the earlier you get it, honestly, the better off it is because you need to get more bees and all you need is one bee to start that process off. Yeah, I, I sort of mentioned how they looked like they were smaller. <laughs> I was mistaken. These are uh, basically the same size. Um, yeah, the, I've already mined over two stacks of tin and I still have more to go. Like this whole area I've been, yeah, this was all tin. I, I don't even, I don't even know where it ends. Maybe I'll end up mining up the whole island before I'm done. All right, I, I had to stop at four. I mean, I had to stop at four stacks. I, I, we'll come back to this later. It's, it's not ending. It's, it's literally ne never ending. It's, I, there's so much ore here. Like that's ore. That's, that, that's ore. So yeah, once you, <laughs> that's ore. Once you find an, uh, an ore vein, oh my gosh, there's more ore. I, I'm out. I'm out of here. This is too much ore. So since I've mined all that ore, might as well find some coal. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I found another uh, roofed forest or another, uh, as I would call it, dark oak forest. Um, and yeah, right here is a coal sample, which means, oh, there's coal like literally right here. By the way, don't mine straight down. I mean, well, mine straight down, but mine two blocks at a time. That's that's sort of the uh, the best way to go in a down direction because you don't want to fall into the void. And that's probably what, there's a good chance that can happen if you just start mining like straight down. So I'm uh, I'm getting myself some glass here by uh, putting some sand in here, letting it cook down and each block of sand will equal a piece of glass. Um, and now I'm also getting the copper to go in it as well. Um, and I also need to start working on getting our tin. Now we can sort these by nine a piece and we need to make sure that we end up with that amount in our inventory. Um, that way we don't end up with some weird amount because one random piece goes in and yeah, we just end up with an odd amount in this uh, smeltery. Uh, but as you can see, we can knock this out pretty quickly. So we can also now make ourselves a regular furnace. And what do we do with a regular furnace? Well, we automate it, of course. But what else will we do with this furnace? Um, so to get that all set up, I'm just gonna cut out a little bit of this side area. And uh, actually in the middle here, we don't really need this ladder. We, we don't. Um, what I'm gonna do is take this ladder out. We're gonna put something else here uh, because I'm able to just climb up the wall. And I think it's almost easier to do that, to just climb up the wall like this instead of using the ladder. Um, so let's go ahead and get our furnace placed in here. Actually, I, I need to place my chest first of all. Place a chest right here. And I think it would be easier to have it actually on one level lower, potentially. Just just have it down here. So instead, let's place our chest in the floor, and then we can place our hopper. And this hopper should be fast enough. Shouldn't cause any problems to have that hopper there. And then, of course, right here, we are going to have our furnace. Um, to the side of that furnace, we're going to have a chest right here. And this on the side is going to be where our coal goes. Of course, that is going to get the coal. We can put a little slab here and then we'll also make sure the back here is a different material. So it matches everything else. And then up top, we need to make sure we have enough room for another hopper to go on top and then a place for a chest. And then of course this needs to be some kind of slab or something like that. And then I just decorate the side, just making sure that uh, everything stays consistent and we have a good looking build. And of course I can uh, kind of customize this to my liking. Now that our automation is set up, we might as well use it. Right? I mean, let's figure out something to do with this. Uh, can these, by the way, can these trims? Oh, they can be placed on the underside. Oh, that looks so good. Apparently I dropped an unfamiliar item. Oh, glass is apparently something that we shouldn't be able to make at this point because <laughs> I haven't discovered it yet. Interesting. Okay, well, I'm still working towards everything else. Um, as you can see, I just ran out of coal over here. So we do need to definitely mine more coal. That's gonna be very important and it's gonna be an integral part of our entire automation system. But right here, I'm gonna place some coal, get that into our hopper, and then just place some clay because before we end, I definitely want to get myself a nice little uh, immersive engineering setup going. So I don't wanna forget about the bee. We do need to at least make one apiary for right now and uh, just throw this bee in it. That's all you have to do to get things started. By the way, this is how I'm gonna be getting out from this point on. Um, and I'm just gonna place it near some of my crops over here. Like might as well place it near the uh, the rustic ones, for example. Let's place it right here. And then all I gotta do is place the bee in. And now we have a beehive. I don't think we need two. I think one does fine and it should start to produce even with just one in here. Well, I was completely wrong with the furnace. Apparently it can't cook clay. Okay, but this can. So this is free. This doesn't cost any coal. So. We'll just cook our uh, our clay here and make our bricks. I mean, I guess it makes more sense because it is a, a clay kiln. I, I probably should have probably should have thought of that one. Yeah, th that's my fault. So one of the last things we need is a kiln. So I just need to make it. Um, now this is going to require one, two, three, four, four of these to be made. Um, I think we need eight in order to make a full kiln because it is a two by two by two multi-block structure. Uh, we're also gonna need a hammer. So a hammer from immersive engineering, in this case is gonna require some copper and some string. Um, as it is a two by two structure, it is gonna fit kind of odd into most of our builds. But I think what I'm gonna do is just, um, it's gonna be placed outside, of course. I wouldn't wanna place this inside. It's, it's gonna be cooking things at incredibly hot temperatures. So of course it needs to have a nice little place outside. And what better place for it than this nice little uh, spot in the dirt? 
just like that. We smack that, and there we go. We have ourselves a kiln. Um, now, you can cover this, decorate it however you want. I'm going to use some cobblestone and make it just a little bit better looking than it currently is. Because right now, of course, it's it's not that appealing. I mean, there's really not that much you can do to make it better. But, I mean, if anything, we could at least spruce it up with a, a couple of our, our cobblestone blocks. And uh, maybe our, maybe some stone as well. Actually, instead of, instead of a bunch of cobblestone, how about we incorporate some of the slate that we've got into it as well. Um, and we do have the chisel block, or the chisel, that is going to be something that we have here soon. Um, if we take a look... That uh, if you take a look, most of these items I believe can be chiseled. You can see it requires a tin plate in order to make a chisel, and we can actually make a tin plate right now. If we open this up, we have a tin ingot. If we throw it on here, we should be able to hit it with the hammer and turn it into a tin plate, thus getting us a chisel. Oh, yeah. And we can make things look a little bit nicer now. Look at that. That's a whole bunch of cobblestone converted right there. Hmm. Man, I miss chisel. So with this put together, this little uh, brick hut, we can throw in copper and tin, and that is going to produce bronze. That's right. And we're leading into sort of the middle of age one. Now, you're like, hey, you haven't done some of these other quests on the side. Believe me, we'll get to them. Um, the one with the hunting dimension, it's something that's definitely needed to be done. It's a really great dimension, but it's also incredibly dark until you have a nice light source. So I'm going to avoid going there until I absolutely need to until we have better sources of light. Torches are not the easiest thing to make even right now. Um, and then also, this is just an, another bed. We will get to that. This is actually a really decent bed. It's better than using our tent, but our tent is still functional right now. Aqueducts are not something that I need a, a right now. Um, but later on, they we might be able to use aqueducts. I don't know where they fit exactly in our current playthrough. Um, and then these, they can go on uh, the bottom of barrels to make them larger as well. I also don't know where this is going to help us at the moment, but it might later on. So keep that in mind. This could be something that we could always use. But as far as this, I mean, I that's, I mean, we're just basically waiting on bronze to, to cook up. As you can see, it takes a little bit of time. The, the kiln is really slow, um, but it is the, the first stepping stones into the Bronze Age. So as always, I want to give a huge shout out to the Patreon of the day, and that is going to Saber19. Let me go ahead and get that thanks. And uh, thank you so much, Saber19. I really do appreciate you, and I do appreciate all of my Patreons. Guys, if you're interested in that, of course, you can find that linked down in the description below. And uh, it comes with a lot of awesome perks that uh, you can use on Discord. Um, we already have an amazing Discord community, and I, I welcome you guys to join in on that community. But if you're a Patreon, you also get some bonus benefits. Um, so guys, I hope you enjoy. I hope to see you in the next episode. You guys know how it goes. Don't forget that subscribe button and also give this video a huge thumbs up as always thanks for watching